Hey, <laughs> on that on that topic, because uh, you kind of sh- you kind of uh, headed down a road that I wanted to explore was um, growing up being mixed, being Afagasi in our culture, we call mm. Afagasi. Being mixed, half black, half Samoan. In your case, half Filipino, half Samoan. No, no. half Hawaiian, half Samoan. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Don't you dare my do bad, that to me. <laughs> I'm gonna edit that out. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hawaiian and Samoan, but just being mixed growing up um, and having a different experience depending on how you grew up. But like, I'll speak on mine. Like growing up being being mixed, I, ne- I never felt like I was black enough or Samoan enough. So I always kind of felt like I was just an like outcast or somewhere floating in the middle. You know what I'm saying? And, and it kind of messed me up. Like I remember being younger and not. Not wanting to be black because you know, like I got made fun of my skin. All my cousins were were Samoan, so it just kind of like had a weird taste in my mouth when it came to like being proud of who I was as a, as a kid. And so I think mm-hmm. I'm just probably in my late twenties I started realizing, you know, like it's cool to embrace who you are, embrace yeah. embrace both sides. I'm proud to be both. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I have just equal amount of love for both. But how is it for you for you guys? You know what I'm saying? And in, in your experiences? Yeah. Um. Well, like. I know that I said, like, I grew up with a bunch of Filipinos, but that's just, I don't know. Like, I think it's just because of how I look. They just, like, just assumed I was Filipino, which is, like, you know, cool for the time being. But, like, it was, and I explained this to you guys, but I never, like, told this story on camera. Um, There were these two poly boys that basically, when I was in middle school, made me feel like I was not someone just solely because of my face. Hmm. Um, So, like, they looked at me, and then they asked me for my last name. And granted, like, my last name is not a Samoan last name it's my grandfather's last name and it's not Hawaiian and it's not Samoan it's just not Pali at all but um so that didn't help me in any case either so they just kept telling me like you're not Pali like you're not Samoan shut up and I was like all right cool and then like the, that cycle continued into mm-hmm. high school where the Samoan girls didn't look at me like I was Samoan the you know the Pali girls in general didn't look at me like I was Pali they just looked at me as Filipino especially because I hung out with Filipinos mm-hmm. but I'm like Hey, like they going to college. Like I'm going to college too, so I need to hang out with them, you know. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like it was a lot of that, and it wasn't until I finally got to college, and I avoided Samoans for the rest of like my whole entire life, up until I want to say like my junior year of college, yeah. when I finally found the Pacific Islander Association. Shout out to y'all um, at CSULB. They gave me like a sense of pride and mm-hmm. a sense of like space. Yeah. to just fully be like a different kind of poly in their world mm-hmm. and introduce me to what the culture is about. And they showed me what being Samoan is about. Cause I, again, I avoided my whole entire Samoan culture after that incident mm-hmm. in middle school. And that tells you a lot. Like we, we halfers, we Afakasi people, like y'all love to hurt us. Like <laughs> y'all love to hurt us. And it's a, it's a shitty ass road. But funny enough, like it's always the Afakasis who end up being <laughs> the ones who go the hardest for the culture. If that's if that's something you didn't notice, it's something you will notice. I think now. you need to notice it. Yeah. I will say I am full Samoan. So but I have a lot of cousins. I grew up with a lot of people who are Afakasi. And so um growing up, like hearing all of you guys' stories too, we've talked about this off camera before. Hearing everyone's story, I'm just like, that was that experience that you guys have and that perspective is like, it's so sad to me. Like, it's it like, it like it's so sad. And I have a lot of cousins, so I was telling them like, I never thought it was different. Like, I really thought this is how life is. Yeah. And like, we were all like, and a tribute to our, to our family and our parents about how we were, you know, raised and stuff. Like, my cousins are half black. My other, my other cousins are like half white. And like, those are my people. Like, I've never seen them as only half. Like, I just am like very much, this is us. This is who we are. This is how we show up. And it's like, it's all love. Like, I feel like maybe they have had experiences like you guys. And to think of somebody that I love having that experience is so sad to me. Like, it's just, it's really unfortunate that we do have those experiences. But I can also say like me being full Samoan and not being able to speak Samoan is probably a different whole thing because, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe I'm like whitewashed, quote unquote. Plastic poly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which is so crazy. Like, why do we even have these things these sayings for people who are of the of the culture. Yeah. You know, like it's so it's not cringy, but it's just so weird. Like yeah. we should not be talking like that. Everybody, if you're even one percent, bro, like that's us. Mm-hmm. That's me. That's you. Yes. Like you is me, I am you, like we we is we. Yes. Kind of thing. You know, so Thanks. like I I hate that. But I I love that you guys are sharing your experiences because I feel like a lot of people resonate and understand where you guys are coming from. We Afakasis are the minority in the minority, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean. Like so. it sucks. It sucks to it sucks to say 
but I, I'll never take away the experience. Like it, that mm. taught me, actually taught me a lot in my my uh, my childhood. That was an adult life. You know what I mean? Like um, I didn't. I didn't. Growing up, I was actually ashamed. I mm. felt ashamed to be uh, black. I, I felt. I felt ashamed when someone would call me Mayuli and just look at me. I felt. I felt so icky. You mm. know what I mean? So. Growing up, like the jokes, man, we heard all the jokes, yeah, bro. We, for sure. All the jokes in the book. They don't hurt me no more, but no, as a every, kid, yeah, they, they sung. Man, for sure. they, they were like arrows. Dude. They were it's like so arrows going to my yeah. heart, you know. And I took that. I took that to heart, man. And uh, I didn't accept uh, being who I was until maybe like junior year, senior year of, of my high school. You know, what I mean, I was like, you know, I'm tired of, of of feeling this type of way. Like, if you if I'm black, I'm black. You know what I mean? I'm Samoan. Like, if I used to, I used to get really upset with with those that made me feel that. I wasn't um, good enough to be Samoan because, like, I'm looking at these guys and, like, when we start talking about the culture, or I know more than these guys. Hmm. Why are they? Why are they trying to get at me? Like, I, there are certain things you don't know about about your own culture, and you're looking at me telling me I'm not Samoan. Like, it's kind of crazy to think about, but I wouldn't take away any of it. Um, I, I I I take pride of who I am as a person, mm -hmm. as a Samoan man, as a black man. Mm -hmm. I take. Very, very big pride in it. And uh, when I look at my kids now, you know, my kids are mixed. My kids are Samoan, Tongan, and Black. Like, I mean, I ain't going to lie. They're pretty light-skinned. You know what I mean? <laughs> pretty light-skinned kids. But, but like, they... The I, melanin going to come. It's yeah, going to yeah. come. I, yeah. definitely, I definitely want that. I want to instill in them that something that I wasn't instilled. It was always just me and my mom. My mom was Samoan. So, like, um, I was never instilled uh, the the other side of me. You know mm. what I mean? The other half of me. And I, I definitely want to instill uh, what it is to be, like, a Black man my kids you know like i feel like i feel like the times have changed um i'm not gonna lie growing up it was just me which is me and my sister i've always seen that was alpha kids, kids i probably only met like five or six growing up mm -hmm. but once i got out of the nest and i started meeting more people i started seeing the dynamic change like yeah. i'm starting to meet more alpha guys like it's, yeah. it was kind of crazy and, and their experiences were the same and um you know like you kind of seen it was like seamless yeah and nowadays i'm starting to see a um, more opening you know mm -hmm. like i started i'm starting to see a little I forgot these kids. I'm like, this is cool, you know. And, and um, I don't find the older people talking mess about I forgot yeah, yeah. kids anymore. If anything, yeah. I see them embracing them, and that I think yeah. that's awesome. They have to yeah. saying and like mixing and being able to take part in different cultures is such a beautiful thing. Yes. and it should be like it should be cherished and it should be celebrated because I mean we're going into just being able to love somebody, whoever you love. You know what I'm saying? And like back in the islands for sure like that's you know those are your people that's all you have that's the pool yeah. but when you move to here and you have the experiences of being able to you know go out and be in the world like obviously we're gonna meet other people so i guess i guess i'm trying i don't want to skip over but we can go into that i have another question after but yeah just uh before you before you head yeah. that because I, I i will be honest like i've had moments uh as i was starting on the mobile and just you know pushing it I, I felt like damn like am i even qualified to to create this platform or, hmm. you know, I, I didn't grow up the most well-versed Samoan, you know, like, you know, like, like I told you about my experience growing up, like if anything, I kind of wanted to move away from the, from our culture because I felt like I wasn't welcome. So like, I was like, all right, cool. If y'all don't want me around, I'm gonna just go here. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't grow up learning language. I didn't really learn a lot about the culture until I got older. And so like my whole uh, perspective of the culture, I think is starting to come full circle now, but you know, I, I felt at times I was like, man, am I qualified or, you know, am I this or enough or that or enough? You know, and and to me, my my whole perspective changed when I realized, man, it's not really about how much you know. Mm. Um, sure, knowledge is important. Understanding your history is important. Understanding your family and the roots and all the stories, like all that's important. I hundred percent agree. But that doesn't that your lack of that doesn't disqualify you from pushing the culture forward. Yes, There's that's right. so many ways to push the culture yeah. forward. Um, and I, and to me, it was like. There's so many people that know everything in the world, right? But they don't do anything for the culture. Mm -hmm. yep. You know what I'm saying? So, so like for me, it's like, yeah, I'm still I'm still in the process of learning, learning the language, learning the customs and the traditions. You know what I'm saying? Um, but at the same time, I feel like, well, what am I passionate about? What do I love to doing? And how can I use that to help our people? And that's kind of what gave me the, like, you know, that that just that courage to just go for it yeah. and do it. And that, and that's my advice to anybody in the culture. You know, if you feel like, man, maybe I'm not the most versed in the language, or maybe I'm not you know, hip to all the custom, like, don't let those lack of things, don't let them stop you from pushing the culture forward. You could mm -hmm. be, you could be a, a, a painter, you could be a dentist, right? And you could push the culture from that, you know what I'm saying? You could help other painters, other dentists, other people in our culture, right? There's so many ways to push it forward. Don't let your lack of, of knowledge or lack of maybe being a 
equipped with all of the different things in the culture. Don't let those things that you don't have them, don't let those things stop you, man. Just, you know, push the culture forward yeah. in whatever way yeah. you feel, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and people that are watching the different movements, like have grace, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like don't crucify the rock, right? <laughs> Do Every not. time he does something, right? Because why are the I, comments like Yeah, you know saying like <laughs> like the rock is I this is just my personal opinion. The Rock is doing an amazing job of putting the culture on the grand stage. Yes. It's up to us to support him and, and continue to do things on our end as well. We can't just look at him like, oh, he's not doing enough or he's not doing anything. Yeah. Like, well, you go do something then. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, make a movement happen on your end. You know what I'm saying? But like anybody who's doing something for the culture, whether you're the most this or that, like, I, I just commend you. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. And I salute all of our creators, mm -hmm. all the platforms out there doing anything is love for sure. You want to know why he gets that? Because he's off of Kasi. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> he got the same experience we did. You know what I mean? Yeah. Black Swan. Like, For sure, yeah. Period. He got, he got the same thing. And, like, and I'm, I'm proud of him. I'm proud of him. I know we're yeah. all proud of him. You know what I mean? I just would wish that everybody in the culture would stop putting him down. You know what I mean? Even yeah. even the younger, even the younger Usos and Tokos. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know? He's just one person, y'all. He can't take the whole yeah. culture yeah. and just do it right. The first, Like, it's just yeah. one person. Just like all of us. We're... We're mirrors of our culture, but we are not, we are our own selves. Like we're our own individual. We have our own perspectives. We have our own experiences. We're just sharing them through a lens of a Polynesian person. Like that's it. Yeah. We're not necessarily, not everybody's on our back. For sure we can take it. Obviously we take that with us, but I'm not representing every Samoan woman, mm -hmm. woman in this world. No, I'm only representing myself yep. and who, who raised me, like my family. That's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not trying to take everybody like, Everything on, like, we can't do that as individuals. We have to continue to just keep doing us and stay in our own lanes. Like, that's it. Hell yeah. Yep. Hell yeah. Oh, I just yeah. got a dab from yeah. y'all saying, yes. you feel me? I felt that. That was the last day dab. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 